Uh, first, just uh, thanks to our staff and um, so many that uh, contribute to the recruiting process. And it's not just the people in this building, it's the academic support staff, our administration, um, the student body when we're on campus and have activities. Uh, so many people pitch in, the pilots, um, just, just so many people pitch in to uh, contribute to the efforts that go into recruiting. And it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a large, large, large task, and it takes everybody from personnel to the recruiting staff and obviously the, uh, the coaches that are involved um, in the actual on-the-ground recruiting. So I thought the effort that was put into uh, trying to make our first class here a, a top 10 class, which was our goal. I don't know where we stand with that. I can't keep up with all of that, but uh, that was our goal is in year one to – to, to have a top 10 class and then in year two to have a top five class. And, um, and that is the way I think you start uh, building a, a program that is able to stack itself upon each other and create a competitiveness among the, the roster that uh, drives you to, to chase a standard every day that's needed to win in this conference. And so um, just thanks to all the people that, um, that, that pitched into that and, it takes, a, obviously, the people that have helped fund this building and the, the facilities and the resources we have. It's all um, a part of, of, the, of the journey. So thankful for the effort. I think uh, I couldn't have asked any more out of the effort that uh, it took to try in a short amount of time to, to get into the battles for the top guys because, truthfully, the elite schools are always – you know, a couple years ahead, and um, we had to close the gap on, on a lot uh, to get in those battles. We didn't win all of them, uh, but we sure were in them, and um, I think that speaks to the, the, the effort we put into building relationships with so many. So i um, excited about this class. Uh, we focused on the high school class. I said that in our press conference the other day. I don't know that that's the right approach, but it's certainly uh, – I did not want to – I wanted them to feel like they're the priority. And um, so we did not uh, chase hard and, and portal um, on everyone that could play, and there was a lot that could because we were just committed to uh, making sure that our high school class felt like they were the priority of, of us establishing the true rebuild here at Auburn. And now we'll go from here, and hopefully they'll be – uh, the missing pieces that uh, that we did not land, uh, we we will hope that uh, we can find them either between now and uh, the spring term or um, after the the spring uh, practice and and that portal opens again. We'll see what happens then with what our needs will be at that time. So excited about the class, obviously, just thrilled with the effort, and I really believe that the young men that we've signed and the families they come from. Um, I love these kids. I, I love them as, as individuals. I think they're genuine. I think they want to help a program uh, reestablish itself as one of the elite programs in the country, and and I think they love to work at it and excited to, to get a lot of them here soon and go to work. Hey, Hugh, just how much effort went into keeping the guys that were committed versus – going out and trying to flip guys from other places? Uh, it was both. I mean, you can't. It, listen, last night it was uh, – there's some schools in this conference that uh, they, they, they believe in last night efforts. And, um, and what, you know, you gotta, you got to fight and you got to hold on and you got to stay up all night and play video games and – and do stuff that's out of my comfort zone, and um, but you you just you know there was there was some late night pushes, and we won, held on some, and won one, and lost one, and um, you know, people in this conference are good at what they do, and um, I don't always like what is done, but it's uh, it's it's you know you got to just you got to have plans and you got to fight for it, and. Um, 
but it was both. I mean, it's you got to try to hold on to your good ones and all of yours, and then you're trying to win a few battles at the end on some some kids that are undecided. Coach, you guys attacked the skill positions really hard in this class. You had a lot of good successes, um, but so many games are, are won and lost in the trenches. Can you talk about offensive line recruiting in this class and, and how you guys plan to fill some holes you may have coming up there? Yeah, we're uh, uh, that was that was one position in the uh, in the portal that we knew we probably needed a few, and we didn't get the the, the two guys that we kind of focused on in the portal, um, and you know the. I love the two that we have, DeAndre and Seth. I think Seth was named yesterday first team All-American, something that we saw in him. And um, obviously DeAndre, we think is just one of the, I think he's going to be an NFL uh, inside guard center and love him as a kid. So I think, um, I think we got two really good ones there committed. And um, there's still, they're still one out there we're battling for or two that we're battling for truthfully and then we'll go from there and uh, hopefully they'll be the ones we um, if we need more we'll certainly uh, hopefully there'll be a few that go in the portal that we can try to get in on but there's no question that uh, that that one that one position has been the biggest um, challenge for me to try to figure out and uh, for Jake to try to figure out, so we're uh, we're still trying to figure that one out. Truthfully, okay, yeah, thanks, uh, Hugh. Uh, you took time off from working on the offense or in offensive game planning to focus on recruiting. How does Bill now that you know this class is kind of kind of fruition? <clears throat> I'm. Uh, I, I think that we well to start. So Walker White, I think is going to be a star. Um, I think he's got all the attributes of what a quarterback should look like. I think he's a true Auburn man. Um, obviously, you don't know how he's um, how quick he will uh, adjust to this game, but I think he's got all the skill sets to do that. And then you move to where it's no no secret we needed to get some difference makers at the receiver position and to land two of the top ten in the nation in Perry and Cam, and then two others in that I think are sleepers. I mean, but they're both are ranked in what the top 150 in the country, um, in Bryce and Malcolm. Um, I, I think we've gone a, a, a now. They're going to have to get thrown in the deep end of the pool and, 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 and swim pretty fast. But I think they have that ability and um, you know, I, it changes our offense if we have guys like that on the outside and in the slot that can make plays and I've seen them do it I'm reminded when we started rebuilding Ole Miss um, that first full class just like this first full class we talked to a guy by the name of Laquan Treadwell in coming with us and uh, it, it changed the way we called games and uh, I feel the same about getting the, the Cam and Perry's and and Malcolm's and Bryce's. So, you know, you, you combine Walker with, with those. Um, I think we did pretty good at the skill positions. So I think the time I chose to to maybe spend away from the offensive side of the ball, it, it, it paid some dividends there. And for sure, I, I would argue that we have I don't I don't again I can't keep up with all the rankings and polls and stuff, but I would argue that our receiver class and our linebacker class has to be two of the the top in the country. Um, I don't know how they rank that or anything, but if you take Waller and Phillips and Riddick and Barber, um, I would I would venture to guess that we we rival most any linebacker class that was signed from the high school ranks, along with the receiver rankings. So. Um, also excited about our DBs with Faustin and Amon Lane and Jalen Crawford and Laquan Robinson. And, um, am I forgetting somebody there? And Caleb Harris, who's really physical. And um, we need that. So, and then D-line, I think, you know, between T.J. Lindsey and Malik Blockton and um, Jamonte Waller and 
gauge keys and I think we're we're improving ourselves there. We're still looking for uh, for a little more help there also, but really pleased with the linebackers. And then we have we have Darren Mossy also from uh, from Duke at linebacker. This uh, very experienced guy and um, that is signed with us also. So we're uh, we're 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 steadily building, and so I'm pleased for the time that I took away. I think it did pay dividends. You mentioned a few a few spots where you're still battling for. You have any idea of just round round number as to what you expect total number when the dust settles by Friday, and then how many you'd have uh, available in the spring? Well, availability today is that number moves constantly because of the freedom that players have uh, today, and so I, it's hard for me to say what's available and what's not, but. As far as the number for Friday, I don't even know what number we're at right now, but uh, Ethan, we're at 24 right now, but um, I mean, we're in some battles for, for three kids left that I know of, and um, I don't know that every all of them will sign today or not, but um, we're, we're in some battles there, and then uh, there's a few portal guys that we have an interest in, um, but um, so I, I really don't know what the number would be at the end of Friday. You, you talked about the wide receiver group. Obviously, had a, a transfer in there as well. But when you yeah, were, I forgot about Robert Lewis, who I think is a really, really solid player that gives us some experience and the good that he'll be here in the spring. How, how valuable is it to have? I mean, you got lots of different types of guys. I mean, you got big, physical, small, fast. I mean, how valuable is that to have different players that can fit in different spots? Well, I like length and catch radius, um, so I'm glad that we've added some of that. I don't mind small kids, um, but I just don't think you can have too many of them in this league. And, you know, I think now we're, we've got Jay Fair and we've got Bryce Kane, and I think those are two guys that can play in this league. And um, and then the others have all have some length to them. How important was Joe Phillips kind of being a spark for those summer months going into Big Cat and getting a big win to kind of get y'all going there? Yeah, I thought uh, – I can't remember the exact time frame, but I thought he and Riddick uh, jumping in there when they had, you know, to battle people like Georgia and Alabama for those guys and uh, for us to hold on to them. I think we signed 12 guys from the state of uh, Alabama, which is which is big because we want to we wanna win this state. And – I don't know if we won the state this year or not. I don't know how that's determined, but uh, we cert certainly would like to in the future um, of winning our share, if not more than our share in this state. And I thought Joseph and um, and Riddick really helped kind of kickstart that. Yeah. Hugh, you, a lot of your guys are a lot of the bigger, the, the big prospects were guys that were committed elsewhere uh, in the SEC, some big name programs. That, as a staff, just what did it take for y'all to, you know, overcome some of that against these schools that, like you said earlier, have have a couple years head start recruiting some of these guys? Yeah, I think it's just just uh, time and effort, and getting them to campus as many times as you can, and seeing if they can't feel a different feel about here, as opposed to other places. Look, um, every every individual has a criteria of how they make decisions and. And what is going to be the the motivating factor um, in their decision? And I think uh, we're probably not going to. We're obviously not going to win all of those, um, but we just got to win our share. And I think just putting enough time and effort into the right type of kid and family that we know fits here, uh, we we got a really good shot at doing that. The ones that may not really fit here. Um, you know, we're probably not going to be as successful with in, in turning their head toward here in that short amount of time. So I thought we were pretty um, wise about the targets that we felt like, man, this, this, this kid and family will resonate with the Auburn culture, the Auburn family, the Auburn feel. Let's, let's invest our time in those. One of those SEC flip guys was a was a was a Cam Coleman. I, that was obviously a really wild recruiting process. You're kind of 
what did, kind of effort did that take from you guys, from from uh, from Marcus, to, to to pull that one off? In the end? Yeah, I don't know if I, all of our staff put in great effort, but Marcus Davis, he he, he had to spend extra extra time um, because of the number of, of kids we were trying to sign there too, and 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 the ranking of them. But we, uh, I mean, when Cam made his commitment to another school, we just immediately said, look, that's fine, but we're not going to waver. And we are not going away, and we are going to fight to the end, and we'll prove to you that uh, that we want you more, that we obviously feel like you're a difference maker here, and um, we just we just were relentless of, of making sure he understood that. and. Obviously, it helped that uh, the other school had a coaching change, but um, I'd like to think we were going to win it anyway, but I don't know if that's the case or not, but I'm glad it worked out the way it did. Here, there are different types of high school recruits. You've got guys that have been committed since since day one, like Walker White. You have guys that you pick up along the way, and then you have flips on National Signing Day. How exciting is it to have? Excuse me. How exciting is it to have some of those guys that you flip from big name programs on a day like today? How is, exciting is that for you and your staff? Well, that's more of a relief. I mean, you you you'll be excited. I mean, you're excited when you watch it, and then you're like, "Thank you, Lord," you know, because you know some of them they go quiet on you sometimes, and you wonder, and um, you know, are the paper the papers in on the last one? Yeah. Um, but like, I mean, to get Amaris, I mean, what is he, the number 37th player in the country? 34, 34th player in the country. Um, yeah, that's pretty big. I think he's a one heck of an athlete and um, loved getting to know him. And my home visit with him and his mom was incredible. And, um, we were behind, obviously, but Coach G. Garrett did a great job just staying in it, staying in it, staying in it. And, um, you know, but that's a difference maker type of kid. Um, you get you get a 34-ranked player in the country, and that should bump us up in rankings, I would think. But um, I just, you know, those are rewarding. At the same time, you think you've done all to to flip another one, and then all of a sudden he goes another direction. Uh, you know those you you just take them in stride. Really, you know you gave your best, and um, two days ago was told that you know I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming, and then you know today it changes, and um, you know those are always disappointing because you put great effort in theirs, but you we've done this long enough to where those are going to happen, and so you just. You just keep fighting and keep battling, and hopefully you win more than your share um, to get us up there where we have some elite classes to start stacking on top of each other. Coach, just kind of circling back with, with more specificity on, on first question, what did you find was the most effective message in recruiting this cycle? I mean, was it opportunity? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, NIL has become a, a part of the conversation. Yeah. Um, you talked about kids having the resources to bless kids but not wanting that to come with entitlement no you know, I, i'm i'm totally opposed to the entitlement syndrome that uh, and i tell them that i just say look if um truthfully if if ever truthfully if i had my way which I, I wouldn't and i'm sure there's something but i'd just soon everybody whatever nil agreement they have it would be all all be the same for your level of classification uh, on the on the base, and then everything else is incentive. Uh, you play you play in thirty snaps, man. You get this. You win a game, you get this. Man, I would love to see people have to earn and and strive to move themselves up and 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 do that. But that's they don't ask me, and and that, so it, it is what it is. So the, that's certainly part of the game, and you know we're only allowed to give them a range. But um, that 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 we would see them valued at. But I really think that it's uh, the 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 selling pitch is look. This place has played for two national championships. Yeah, it hadn't been as recent as some of the other elite. But there's only in what twelve or thirteen years only six schools that can say that, and this is one of them. All right, so 
Yes, you can go to the elite right now and you can help them sustain. And there's nothing wrong with that. You could also choose that you want to be a trailblazer and do something different and join together with a group of guys and return a program that's proven it can be there and return it back to that. And that is the message along with the environment that we have. Um, does it fit you? And if the environment fits you to where you would want to show up every day here and work, because it is work, it's a full-time job. Um, and you're motivated by the opportunity to do something early and help us restore something at a place that the, pa the passion of the fans and the support of uh, our people is got to be as good as everywhere else, then this might be the place for you. And so that's the, that's the message. Uh, starting with his commitment, I think, last December, Walker White has been huge in keeping people in touch, helping recruit, had that jacket on with the Freeze 5 or whatever yeah. it's called. How critical has his help been in this process? Well, it's uh, he's just been so consistent in, in trying to continue to recruit uh, his team. You know, and that's what you need. You need a couple of those. You know, Keontae Scott, Jalen Simpson, they, um, Austin Keys, Damari Austin, those are just to mention a few. You know, those are guys that are pitching in doing the same too. But for Walker to – he took kind of the ownership and, and leadership of, hey, let's put together a, a top ten class. That's what we said we wanted. And he jumped in and certainly tried every way in the world to, to help us do that. Yes, uh, Coach Freeze. Um, looks like about half this class will be enrolled by January. Um, and just those guys, and, and really the whole class uh, overall. A lot of these are a lot of these guys going to have an opportunity to play right away. You feel like? Well, coming here in January certainly increases the odds. Um, I'm not saying that uh, that others that show up in summer won't, um, but having them here in in all of spring ball with the whole semester to train with Dom to get in the routine of what it's like to be a college football player and a student um, I think is going to pay them dividends and then you have the summer to continue to train with Dom and they roll into fall camp and they kind of already know the system and the verbiage and and so th it certainly gives them a, a chance to to have a fair shot at jumping in there and playing some You said next year the goal is top five class, and you talked earlier about you know having to catch up you know with a head start in the twenty five class and, and kind of moving forward. Do you guys feel like you're off to a good start, or you know able to you know, able to take advantage of that and try to be in a position to make a run at a top five class next year with what y'all have done already? Well, I'm optimistic. I don't know. You guys probably would know better than I where we kind of currently stand in that. But he said we're already at five, so we just got to hold on. We just got to keep, we just got to keep holding on and add, add some to it. So yeah, I think that I think, with with what we did this year in the short time we had, I think it's a reasonable expectation to think we should be around that top five range. You know, if we're six and seven, I don't know that that's terrible either. But it it, it we need to stack some classes that are competitive with the ones that uh, that we're chasing to close the gap on, and I, I do think it's reasonable to expect that. You want to go back to the transfers, Robert Lewis, Gage Keys, and, and Dorian from Duke. What did you see out of those guys that kind of fit in those those spots you were looking for? Uh, Dorian, mature, played a lot of football, solid, smart, understands fits. Put him on the board, talk about that. He, he just he understands it all. I played in a similar system. Um, thinks you, gives you a heavier mic backer, 240-ish, um, that we really don't have built quite like that. I'm um, so excited to get his maturity there. I think that gives us some flexibility, like with he and Austin at the mic, and now you know maybe Eugene and and one of these others at at uh, at the backup if it's not Cam, and then maybe move Cam to a Jack where we can rush the passer a little better. So it just gives us. I mean, Cam needs to be a part of it. I don't know if it's at Will or Jack or. 
but um, gives us some flexibility along with the, with those young guys to to bring along. Oh, he asked about some others. Hey, Amen. Robert Solid, uh, like I said earlier, I think he can play inside, outside, has some length to him, has done well against good competition, gauge, length on the inside, levers, um, needs to gain a little weight uh, probably, but I thought uh, we liked his activeness and would expect him to be in that rotation of, uh, of inside guys. Hugh, just talk about the loyalty of a guy that you inherited, Amon Langanis, and really the class overall stuck together pretty tight the whole way. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, we, we had to work hard at it, but I do think uh, guys like that that just knew they felt it fit at Auburn and um, and were, were loyal to us and we just preached, man, let's stay together. And I know you're going to get people running at you, um, but just just stay together, and uh, we're fortunate that we had some loyalty in that in that group. Thank you.